Your voice, your views, your vision. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Bobby C. here, and I'm making house calls. I'll be filling in for Dr. Bob Lee as we welcome you to another episode of Open, the one and only show that opens the Bronx and the world to you. In the famous words of the doctor himself, we've got a full and informative show lined up this morning. Leading off our Monday morning highlights, we'll recap this past weekend in the Bronx and beyond. Then, we check in with the master of disaster, Aton Edwards, for tips on how to prepare in the event of mass chaos. Oh, boy. If we survive, we will meet a 17-year-old singing prodigy named Stephanie Courtney, who is making a difference through the sweet sounds of her music. Then, this host will turn sports anchor for a look at Yankees Old Timers Day and a Bronx Dead exclusive with Rising Hoop star Kimba Walker. And before we depart, we hit the Music Monday soundstage to the smooth, soulful sounds of Vin Keaton. So stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way because we are now officially open. Bobby C. and you're watching Open. Today is Monday, June 27, 2011. Before we hit this weekend's highlights, let's catch up with our resident DJ, DJ Cool Clyde, my man, my main squeeze. I got to ask you, man, how, how's it going, first of all? Fantastic. I did a lot of stuff over the week, and I'm looking forward to having another great week. Um, I got something to talk to you about. Too, yeah, let's, let's talk, man. I, I got something to talk to you about. You know, this weekend, of course, I can't believe it, two years ago, the passing of the legendary Michael Jackson. Do you I believe it's been two years? Two years. I thought that it might have been about a year and a half, but it's two, two years. years now. I got, actually, I'm going to be playing all his music. I'm going to be dedicating all my songs today to Michael Jackson, who was a great legend. And we deeply miss Michael Jackson. I mean, he was like the number one entertainer. Of all, all time. times. Absolutely. You know, so I, I look forward to honoring him. And I got the chance to actually see him perform at Madison Square Garden um, right before 9 11. So wow. that was a great um, performance. But other things that are going on in the news, um, I guess they just passed same sex marriage. Something like that. I, that's what I heard. I don't what is know. your opinion I, you on know, that, I, Mr. I take C? care of the sports here. I don't, I don't really follow the regular news. So I know that's bad at home. I'm sorry. I apologize. But. If it doesn't have a ball in it, I don't really watch it. I don't know what that what that's about. But, but go ahead. Tell me a little bit about. I mean, I heard I heard a lot about it this weekend, but not uh, not fully fully. I mean, I, you know, everything. I actually worked downtown in Manhattan. You know, at the other assistant station downtown, and I mean, it was very difficult getting through traffic um, down there yesterday. I mean, it was just so many people in the streets. Okay, Pride Day, right? Oh, yeah, I believe yeah. that's what it was, and. Um, you know, I, I, my, my basic opinion on that is I, I always stand true for what God says, mm -hmm. and I'll let him make the decision on that. And I'm just wondering where are we going in the future? Will we have, you know, brothers marrying their sisters, um, people marrying their stepdads and moms? Where are we going next? I mean, we're just going at an all times high. And I just think that, um, you know, freedom of speech has, has gone a little bit too far. But that's my basic opinion on that. But I do want to say on another note that I had a great time at the Bronx Museum um, with Shawnee Peters. Um, she promoted We Promote Knowledge and Love. It was an event that happened and it's going an exhibit that's going on from now until September. And I actually got a chance to be, you know, honored there with Africa Bambada and Karis One. That's great. And also over the weekend, everybody should go out and see this. This was a nice Chinese classical play. Me and my, my lady Kim went and um, it was called Shen. You. It was at Lincoln Center. It was a great performance. So if you want to know about Chinese culture, I think this would be a great experience. But back to you, Bobby. See, you look good, man. Thanks, man. I, I try. And I appreciate the opinions. And uh, this is where we put the disclaimer at the bottom, though. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> Thanks, Clyde. We'll be grooving to your music all morning. We now turn our attention to this weekend's news with our Monday morning highlights. Mom. 
Up, a historical step for New York State was taken on Friday, June 24th, when Governor Andrew Cuomo signed the Marriage Equality Act. It was passed by the state Senate legalizing same-sex marriage. Senator Ruben Diaz Sr. was the only Democrat to vote against it. New York is now the sixth state to legalize same-sex marriage. While many celebrate this historic event, others are mourning the death of Jean Collin, a Bronx-born American comic book artist whose best-known works are for Marvel and DC Comics and is best known for titles such as Daredevil and Dracula. Collin was inducted into the Will Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame in 2005 and passed away at Calvary Hospital here in the Bronx last Thursday. Finally this weekend, Pregones Theater here in the Bronx was the location of a multicultural treat. Danza España and Lotus Music and Dance presented Contal, a collaboration of flamenco and Indian dance and music. The event showcased artists such as Narandara Budakar with the tabla, a popular Indian instrument, and Roberto Castiglian with the flamenco guitar. Hopefully I said all those names correct. Those are your Monday morning highlights. Up next, we will check in with the master of disaster himself. But first, the Bronx's annual Valedictorian Award Ceremony was recently held at the Bronx Museum. Reporter Sylvia Anglin has the story. Valedictorian Awards Reception at the National Landmark Valentine Varian House Museum of Bronx History. For award recipients, this achievement means leadership and accomplished goals. It means being a leader, a shining beacon, an example for all to follow. It means that I feel like I've achieved my highest expectations and highest goals inside of high school. and. I was able to come on top of everyone and be number one in my class and represent my class as a whole. The Bronx Historical Society is in its 56th year of honoring valedictorians in the borough for their achievements. We're very big on education. That's what we do. We, we continue to educate everyone in the Bronx. Uh, we have a lot of valuable information, a lot of resources, and it's all for the next generation. So we have a very close connection with Bronx students. And Rachel, the valedictorian from Bronx High School of Science, who is on her way to Syracuse University, is taking this recognition with stride. It's, it's really like a really heady feeling, like, you know, I mean, just because I mean, everybody at Bronx Science, obviously, it's, I mean, it's tough competition, so it's just, I don't know, it feels really great to have achieved so much. Bronx politicians came to show their support of these future doctors, educators, and politicians. Well, what we're doing today is we are celebrating what, what is good about the Bronx. We're giving awards to young people who are great examples to all of us. They can show us what they've achieved and we can just uh, give them kind of a boost so that they continue to achieve and they can continue to make the Bronx proud and us proud. Most, it's uh, our opportunity to uh, really honor those who uh, really are very special. Uh, it takes a lot to be a valedictorian of your graduating class. So what we're doing here today is not only celebrating the Bronx Historical Society and the wonderful history attached to the Bronx, uh, but also the accomplishments of our uh, young Bronxites. This future politician came from Santo Domingo a little over four years ago. I came from the American Republic. Like when I was yeah, younger, so coming for that transition from over there to here, it was hard for me, like, leaving my mother and everything, so going to that school without knowing any English, like, I worked hard and everything throughout the four years. I got involved in different programs and everything, so representing my class of 2011 is an honor to me. And for this award recipient's mom, it means the end of one journey and the beginning of the next. It means the world to me, and it means that all the efforts paid off. His effort especially. He's a very well applied student and a young man. Students have already been honored at their home high schools for their achievements as valedictorians. However, the Bronx Historical Society wanted to honor these students and recognize them for their achievements. From the Valentine Varian House here on Bainbridge Avenue, this is Sylvia Anglin for BronxNet. Thank you, Sylvia, and welcome back to Open. I'm your host, Bobby C. Our first guest is the guy to call when disaster strikes. Please welcome Aton Edwards, Executive Director of the International Preparedness Network. IPN has worked with the Red Cross, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, New York City Police, and other organizations to train thousands to prevent and respond to emergencies and disasters. Morpheus is now in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that nickname, because that is fantastic. Well, outside and of welcome to like, the show. Too. Thank, thank you for having me. You know, I, I guess the, the 
like physical kind of you know resemblances <laughs> in, good. in taking into that into account and also you know some of the things that I've been doing for the past 20 years with my not-for-profit and so, so you combine those two things in dealing with disasters and kind of leading people towards the different methods uh, that are available mm -hmm. to them to avoid the disaster so it, you know thus Lee was born this nickname that is an awesome nickname I well, must admit. you know it's interesting it's interesting but you know I mean not to try to master disasters but to control I'd rather be the con you know control, the control guy you know but but the the fact is is that you know we have a bunch of things that we've got to face as New Yorkers and um, and especially me, you know, I'm Bronx guy born in the Bronx and you know and then raised up here so I'm very concerned about what could happen to my fellow New Yorkers in the event or when we have a major catastrophe. So it's not even like if, it's when. And we just have to recognize that there are just some things that we need to get started with, like right now, um, to kind of like to help us to prepare for, respond to, and recover from the disasters. Mm -hmm. So that's why we started this Ready Up New York campaign. Which is coming up in July. Yeah, it's coming up July the 8th mm -hmm. at St. Francis College in uh, downtown Brooklyn. And um, I teamed up with WRKS-FM, the open line show, because I've been doing that for the past, like, like, since 1997. So we decided that we need to have a town hall forum so that we can present to mm -hmm. New Yorkers what we really need to do when these different disasters strike and they will strike and we've got eight and a half million people in this city and like unfortunately we just don't have a mechanism large enough to serve eight and a half million people so there's certain things that people are going to have to do for themselves that uh, you know that they're going to have to be self-motivated and do things for themselves to protect them from the disasters well if you can explain a little bit more about the network and then some of the potential threats that of course the city faces right now after 9-11 well we started the international preparedness network back in 1989 and uh, we started it as a FEMA civilian disaster managers unit and we brought together some people who were EMTs and medical technicians and medical pro professionals and such that we wanted to come together to kind of form something that could help New Yorkers prepare for disasters and over the years it, it developed into more of an NGO than a just a civilian disasters managers group and so now but recently this well, we decided to create an offshoot of IPN called Ready Up America and that is to kind of go from city to city, town to town, state to state, and to prepare these communities for disasters. And we're starting, obviously, with New York, because that's where we're from. We're New Yorkers, and we want to make New York the most prepared city in the United States. So Ready Up New York is an offshoot of Ready Up America. And that's when, I, you know, again, I teamed up with WRKSFM, The Open mm -hmm. Line, and a bunch of other partners that are coming in. We even have Cool Clyde. DJ Cool Clyde is actually down with Ready Up, and Cool Clyde is going to be doing his own thing with this. So we've got people that are falling into Ready Up that are going to help to prepare New Yorkers for these uh, different types of emergencies that we're going to see. And you have a website, too, Ready for Anything. Readyforanything.org. So that's if anybody easy. wants to you know, reach out and join us, they can go to Ready for Anything. Easy to remember. Right? Absolutely. Readyforanything.org, and you can reach out and you can join us anytime that you like. So, what, but what we've got to do as New Yorkers, we've got to prepare for these eventualities. Like, people don't think you can have an earthquake here. But you can. But you can. <laughs> right. Um, you know, people don't think we can have a tsunami here. Well, yes, but we can because they have the, in, in uh, the Canary Islands archipelago out near Africa and Spain off the coasts, there is a volcano called the Cumbre Viejo. If that erupts and is a huge rock face that if it falls into the ocean, we're going to have a tidal wave, a tsunami, a tidal wave even larger than what Japan saw. And you're could, seeing this more now around the country, around oh, the world, over, more like, natural disasters that we never could have planned for. And now the, the goal is to, is to plan for them, especially at home. Here right, in New York right. City. Look at what happened in Nebraska. We mm -hmm. have the, the, uh, the nuclear power plant that's been flooded. We have Indian Point, the Indian Point facility, which is basically 20 miles away from us in Buchanan, New York. If we have a major catastrophe at Indian Point, you'd have to evacuate the entire city. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of different things that we've got to prepare for, and Ready Up New York is going to do that because we're going to give New Yorkers practical things. And Indian Point's been a major point of contention over the years, not only for natural disasters, but potential attacks after 9 Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I've been, I've, I've worked in the past with a group called the Indian Point Save Energy Coalition, IPSEC, and we've wanted that shut down for quite some time. And the thing is, is because of its proximity to New York City, because you just can't evacuate 8 million people in a proper fashion. So we're going to give New Yorkers the tools that they need if in the event that something like that, you know, God forbid, ever, were to ever happen, you've got to have some sort of an action plan. And we've got those action plans. And so we've got the methods, we've got the, we've got the technology. Absolutely. We can make it happen, you know, so. 
Well, sometimes I, I can't program the DVR at home, so tell me how I'm going to prepare for a natural disaster since I need, I need some advice. Here. Okay, well, the first thing is is that you've got to be able to, for the most part, that the, the, the key period in a natural disaster is like 72 hours. So what you're going to want to be able to do is to kind of ride things out for at least a three-day period without interfacing with anybody. You know, you can just stay up in your home and you can just wait without having to go to the grocery store for supplies. So you want to have what's called like a grab and go bag, or you want to have a 72 hour kit, some people call it a bug out bag, and you want to have that readily available in your apartment stocked with everything that you would need to survive a catastrophe for an extended period of time. Now, I train my folk to say over a week. I mean, I have a go bag that I can last out the, with my entire family for almost, th almost three weeks. But generally speaking, for a regular New Yorker, you ought to have enough supplies to last you for at least two weeks in your house and you ought to have enough in your grab and go bag for at least a week. And that's everything. And the logic here is you don't have to be a Boy Scout to be able to do this. Correct? No, you don't have to be anybody. You can be a, a, a grandmother, you can be a grandfather, you can be anyone that can do this. It's just up to you to have the will. And oftentimes people ask me, how much does this cost? You know what? It doesn't cost very much at all. In fact, and it's your it life we're talking about. Yeah, it's your here. life. If you want to put a price on that, then, you know, or, or discomfort too. Because in the event of a serious catastrophe, like, you know, I, it's something that pe people get upset about, but you've heard the, the Office of Emergency Management speaking mm -hmm. about dirty bombs, and you've also heard them speaking about nuclear uh, weapons. And is that a possibility? It's a possibility. Sure it is. And if it happens, what are you going to do if that day comes where someone detonates a dirty bomb or if someone detonates a tactical nuclear device or an improvised nuclear device? That could happen. So the reality is, or even a biological weapon. So the fact is, is that not only do we have the natural threat, we have the unnatural threat that comes from humans. So we've got to plan for all of them. And by having supplies in your home, by having certain things on you at all times, little miniature, like a little small LED light that you can carry in your pocket in case that there's a blackout, like a little thing called a multi-tool, which is, you know, you've seen those Leathermen yeah, that have all the little mm -hmm. different devices on it, uh, screwdrivers, having a whistle a little whistle to blow, having a partial face respirator. Those are the things that you see in hospitals that the doctors have that an N95 partial face respirator costs about $1.95, $2 at a, at, a, at a medical supply store. That is respiratory protection. Just those few items. Minor items. Minor items yeah. can save you in a catastrophe. So that's just a basic, basic overview. But we have much, much more. We have evacuation routes and we have everything that you need in, in terms of uh, a city and learning how to uh, deal with the disaster. You know, and when you think about it, obviously tragedy, things like 9-11, no one expected that. And uh, again, around the world these these things natural happen. disasters no one could have possibly really thought that these things would really happen some of these things are like out of a movie right it looks and like now 2012, yeah like 2012 and now we have to be prepared for it and it's taking these steps one step at a time correct yeah yeah and you see what happened with the tornadoes recently these these cities are shattered by this so as new yorkers we've got to have these action plans so we've got them and we want to you know and in, and in this ready up new york uh, uh city thing that we have at the saint francis college in brooklyn in july the 8th we're going to throw everything at New Yorkers that they need to know. It's going to be a great event, too, and you have some great sponsorship. If you can talk a little bit more about those sponsors before we head out today. Oh, my goodness. Well, the first thing is, of course, it's WRKS-FM. At KISS-FM, I've been working with the open line for uh, almost 16 years and dealing with this. And Bob Slade and uh, Judge Pickett and uh, James M. Tume, uh, they, came with, they came together and they said, we need to do this. And so WRKS-FM decided that, yes, we need to step behind this because we've, been, we've made the commitment to promote this, so we are going to uh, promote this. So that, those, that's the primary sponsor. And the thing is, is that so they are very, very happy that they are going to be able to help the city in this way. And even you guys, now that you know, I'm here in Bronx Net, so you've become now a part of this matrix. Getting it out there. Getting it out there. So this is, you know, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to, like build bridges with different organizations. That's great that all the uh, organizations are coming together. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And ready for anything. And ready for anything. Ready well, for my not-for-profit, of course, we're the, the, the driver behind that. And, um, and, you know, a number of other organizations that have helped and, you know, to help to spread the word. I mean, I've been working with so many different people in so many different ways, and I think that we're going to have a wonderful event come this July the 8th. Well, Morpheus. My friend, <laughs> readyforanything.org. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. We've got to take a break. When we return, the positive message of music comes to life thanks to singing sensation Stephanie Corton.
Now, Krista, make sure you stay with her the whole time. She's new to the country. This is her Mom. first day. This Mom. is a brand Mom. new country. Mom. It's a whole different it's culture. Gonna be okay. Now, make sure you stay with her the whole time. I'll be here right okay. after school to pick you up. Okay, Mom. Okay, have fun. Bye bye. Bye. Ignore my mom. She's so annoying. She's totally freaking out about this whole thing. She freaks out about everything. She always does that. Ugh. Ignore my mom. So, ready for your first day in the wicked castle of doom? I mean, like, seriously, it's so boring. I don't know how they could put us through this, like, every single day. How many schools do you have in your village? Megan, you're a tramp. Ryan Fitch told me you guys made out. Everybody knows. He says you're the most desperate girl he knows, besides your mom. How many boyfriends does she have anyway? Lots? That zit is huge. Zit face. Ugly. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. Bobby C. filling in for Dr. Bob Lee. She's a lovely young songbird who started singing at the tender age of three. Stephanie Courtney, now 17, is a dynamic church vocalist, and she's here to share her story. Steph, welcome to Open. Hi, thank you. So, tell us about how this music career started. Three years old, unbelievable. Yes, I began singing in the church. I was raised in the church, and my pastor had asked me to sing a song for Divine Hour, special music, and my first song was a Whitney Houston song entitled Jesus Loves Me. And from there, I recorded a gospel album entitled Lord Just Me and You at the age of 13. And then I met up with Mr. Ellaby. And I have three new singles now, Taking Me Over, which is a song I co-wrote with a producer, um, Living the Life, and On the Edge. Wow. You know, it must be difficult at such a young age to try to be Whitney Houston, no? <laughs> Um, you know, I try to be myself, but she was my inspiration, definitely. So is she the biggest influence in your life? Definitely. Her, along with many other talented artists like Brian McKnight, Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, Karen, Karen Clarkshear, Yolanda Adams, and Michael Jackson, definitely. So many others. You seem so vibrant and excited <laughs> and perky, and it's just great. I mean, I think it must help your performances, correct? Yeah, definitely. I'm always ecstatic when I get a chance, an opportunity to sing and just share my, my gift from God. What is the message that you're trying to send to people through mm -hmm. music? The message that I'm trying to, it's more of inspiring others rather than um, just spreading a message. I, I just want to uplift others, you know, going through... Um, tough times, you know, if they're struggling, a struggling family, if they need help. I just want to motivate others, instill encouragement and hope into them. What, was it difficult to make the transition from basically childhood star to now becoming an adult and being in this um, arena? That's very, music business is so tough. It is very tough, but um, I have a very good family foundation and through the loving support of my family, friends and close relatives, I'm able to, you know, endure through it all. So now part of the message is this concept of trying to combat bullying. Yes. Tell us more about that. Well, um, the song Taking Over, it's basically a song which um, um, talks about the, you know, bullying issue, the growing epidemic. And um, as we see today, 
it's growing like crazy. People are committing suicide. And I was bullied when I was younger in my elementary school years because of my eczema. As you can see on my hands, I have eczema. And kids would tease me. Kids would say I was ugly and all these mean things. And it would hurt me. And music was my therapy to endure through it all. Music was the way I was able to get all the emotions off my chest. I was able to express myself through words. And those words became my lyrics. So you've been able to channel all those emotions and now bring it into this creativity yes. and your art. Yes. And you feel at the same time you're also able to help people along yes, the way. Definitely. That's amazing. Thank you. So in terms of creativity, we already we went through the influences, we went through the positive message. Mm -hmm. What's next for you? How are you going to be able to take this and, and reach even more people? Well, um... Tough honestly, question, right? it, it is. It <laughs> is. <laughs> honestly, what's next? Um, is for me to just keep perfecting my craft. Um, I believe that I'm no more than a vessel. You know, I have faith. So I'm here just to enrich others through the exemplary life that I'm living. So what's next is just keep getting my music out there, keep spreading, you know, the word and inspiring others. Can you talk about the role of the church for you? I mean, being able to be in <laughs> front of that kind of crowd, and, and that's got to be a difficult situation because not only are you performing but you're performing in this way in a venue where people have come to hear the gospel. Yes, um, well being um, a church girl, um, I, I, you know, it's just, I don't know what to say, you know, I grew up in the church, is I'm still in the church, it's what I do, um, but I believe that because I have faith, I'm able to succeed and go places and, you know, be strong. That's what I believe. Can, can we hear a few bars or you're not, you're not going to do that for me today? Just um, a couple. A little acapella. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Um, I'm going to sing the first. Actually, I'm, okay, no. I'm going to sing Jesus Loves Me, which is one of my first songs that I sang in the church. Here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me oh yes jesus loves me for the bible tells me so that was as beautiful as you are that was tremendous <laughs> big round of applause here in the studio thank you so where can people find out more about your music? Well, I just want to urge all the fans, supporters to check me out on my website, stephaniecourtneymusic.com. I'm also on Facebook. I have my fan page. I have, you can check me out, Stephanie Courtney Music on Facebook, MySpace, slash Stephanie Courtney Music. I'm also on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Stephanie's Music, Stephanie, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-S, -E -E Music at Twitter and um, you can also check the Double Exposure website okay. dxxnyc.com and that's You have uh, so much energy I just feel like <laughs> I, I need to tap into you instead of having coffee this morning I feel like I can just get the vibes <laughs> from you here in the studio and keep doing the show Yeah. Before we let you go today a couple more questions okay. if you can I just you know because I think it's incredible for the young people here in the Bronx which is really a big thing they watching the show today going to look up to someone like you. And I think the thing when someone's aspiring to be great mm -hmm. is this whole concept of it's so difficult to make it to the next level. And this, this idea of how challenging it is to go from being a young person, especially in today's world, mm -hmm. with the way the economy is, with the way the challenges are. Yeah. Can you just tell more people, what, what would be your message to the young people of the Bronx, how they can take their creativity to a new level? Well, honestly, I believe that um, if you're aspiring to be something, don't follow your own path, design your, I believe that my path was generally designed only for me. So they have to define who they are and go along with what they think they are. Just go along with their path, you know, just define themselves and be original. And that would be the message for young people. Yeah. 
Just be so yourself. definitely having having that good family support, yeah, definitely, having the church, definitely, definitely, and just having basically this unbelievable desire. Yes, has yes, really it, has to be be it has to be passion. It has to be passion. That's yes. incredible. Well, again, one more time before we head out, where can people find the music? You can find it on my Facebook at Stephanie's Courtney Music, on my website stephaniecourtneymusic.com, on Twitter at Stephanie's Music. You can check the Double Exposure website dxxnyc.com. Self promotion is a good thing, especially yes. around here. Yes. Thank you, my dear, for coming <laughs> on the show. Tremendous. Thank you. Let's take another break in the action. Up next, it's my favorite time, sports time. We'll be right back with more on Open after this. Performing Arts Festival. Visit icoda.org for info on the festival or apply to perform. Africa, Asia, America, Caribbean, support us. www.nicoda.org. Nicoda. Aspire. B. Hi, I'm Sonia Richards of the 2008 U.S. Track and Field Team. I'm here with our friends from Jane and the Dragon to say the, the amount, amount counts, counts so, so keep portions, portions under, under control. control. When you're on the go, there's nothing better than a healthy snack to give you a boost. But remember, portions count too. I love fast food. Fruit that is. It's the perfect size and great to eat on the fly. You've got the idea. For fun ways to get healthy, visit www.smallstep.gov. Baseball diamond right here in the Bronx where the Yankees continue to interleague play this weekend at the house that Steinbrenner built. The Bombers welcomed Colorado and former slugger Jason Giambi Friday night. The Rockies took the opener of the series 4-2. Colorado was spurred on by a Giambino home run. Yankees broadcaster John Sterling broke out the former nickname as he promised and making the long ball call on CBS 880 radio. We caught up with Giambi, a fan favorite who played for the Yankees from 2002 to 2008 and Rocky star shortstop Troy Tolowitzki after the game. Here's this. Yeah, I felt good, you know, AJ just uh, had a few mistakes, but like I said, with AJ, you, you just can't miss a mistake because he's got such great stuff. We could never really get over the top on him, you know. We had some opportunities and he just kept us at bay and luckily, you know, we came with a big win tonight. Yeah, it's cool. Everybody knows about, obviously, uh, the history that the Yankees uh, have had for such a long time. Get to play against some of the best players in the game. Um, it's fun to come here. The Yankee faithful gave Giambi a nice hand in his second return trip to the Bronx since wearing the pinstripes. The Yankees bounced back Saturday in an 8-3 win, snapping their two-game mini-losing streak. ACC Sabathia won his third straight start, limiting the Rockies to one earned run over eight innings. Alex Rodriguez provided the punch, driving in three as the Bronx Bombers even the series. Sunday's rubber match continued the homecoming theme of the weekend. The Yankees celebrated their 65th annual Old Timers Day yesterday. Over 50 former pinstripe 
Pipers returned, making their first appearances were former skipper and player Lou Pinella, the still yet to be retired Bernie Williams, managerial great Joe Torre, and former slugging first baseman and World Series hero Tino Martinez. Hall of Famers Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford, and Goose Gossage also took part in the festivities on a day when Derek Jeter celebrated his 37th birthday in Tampa, still nursing a calf injury on the DL. The Bombers honored not only the greats of yesteryear, but also longtime trainer Gene Monahan, who will retire at season's end following 49 years of service to the organization. Gino received numerous gifts, including a trip to Italy for his family, a car, and two seats from the old stadium for his tremendous dedication to the Yankees. He will certainly be missed. As for the old-timers festivities, Tori received nearly a two-minute standing O, while Bernie was also serenaded with love and affection from the Bronx faithful. The Bombers then took on the Clippers in the old-timers game. Martinez blasted one in the right field stands as the Bombers defeated the Clippers 2-0. After, afterwards, excuse me, we caught up with Tino, former Yankee All-Star catcher Mike Stanley, and legendary broadcaster Bob Wolf, who called the game. Check this out. Oh, it was great. Great to come back here and, and see my former teammates and all the greats that have played here in the past. And uh, definitely excited to hit a home run. You know, I was excited about it. Got a great reception from the fans. What's the best part of being back here today? The reception. You know, just, just knowing that uh, that they still back and you, still love you, and, and still like and appreciated what you did on the field. What was it like to get an opportunity to be out there again today? I love to be at Yankee Stadium. It's always a big occasion. No matter what the game is, it's a big occasion. You're in Yankee Stadium. But this is particularly a big one because you feel the devotion and the love of the fans. I love when they get the applause. This is something that is a lasting memory. And they were very liberal with all the cheers and whatnot. And whether they get a hit or don't get a hit, they're back at Yankee Stadium and they're a hero once again. With good feelings rumbling through the stadium, the current Yankees fed off the Bronx cheer and down the Rockies 6-4 to take two of three in the series. Mariano Rivera closed out the game. Jeter's replacement, Eduardo Nunez, had a key hit, and the crowd of 47,894 walked away smiling on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in the Bronx. Today is an off day for the Bombers. They return to action tomorrow night as the Milwaukee Brewers come to town for a three-game series. In honor of the 70th anniversary of Joe DiMaggio's record 56-game hitting streak in 1941 and the 50th anniversary of the Eminem Boys' chase of Babe Ruth in 1961, we will take a moment every week for this day in Yankee history in a segment we like to call The Chase and the Streak. DiMaggio collected a hit in his 39th straight game on June 27, 1941. He had a solo shot in the seventh inning of an eventual 7-6 loss to the Athletics. Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle failed to go deep on this day in 1961 as the Yankees lost 7-6 to the Angels. At that point, Maris had 27 and Mantle had 23 dingers, well ahead of the Babes pace in 1927. The New York Mets defeated the Texas Rangers 8-5 in the Lone Star State Sunday, reaching the 500 mark. Up next, the Amazons are in Detroit before returning home for this weekend's Subway Series at City Field. The new Meadowlands Stadium may be getting a new name. MetLife, who already has a seven or eight million dollar sponsorship, is in talks for the naming rights in a deal that could reach upwards of eighteen million dollars a year. However, still no contract resolution throughout the NFL. On Friday's show, we featured Bronx star Kimba Walker. The morning after he had been drafted by Charlotte, the UConn national champ went ninth in the NBA draft Thursday night. As a special treat this morning, here's an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Kimba that can only be seen on BronxNet television. Check this out. If you can, I mean, this has got to be the culmination of everything. Yeah, definitely. You know, this is this is a, this year has been an unreal year. You know, from from college, you know, us, you know, winning the Big East and. You know, national championship and, you know, me and the president. Uh, Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium. You know, uh, being on graduation at Mother's Day. Then, you know, this past weekend, my, my mom's birthday was on Father's Day. Um, and now the, the NBA draft. You know, it's, it's been a, a, a magical year. Kimba Walker and Michael Jordan. Sounds pretty good. It sounds amazing. Um, you, know, you know, me being paid by the broadcast, I feel like I have the upper edge, you know, over a lot of rookies because... You know, I'm going in you know, to learn a lot of things from the greatest player to ever play the game. So you know, hopefully I can be you know, one of the greats. The Bronx has now got Kimball Walker in the NBA. What do you think this reception is going to be? Man, no, I, I already know that the Bronx is going, you know, going crazy right now. You know, I've, I've always had them on, on my back you know, um, throughout my career. So you know, I just want to say thanks for all their support. 
And then final question, because we don't want to keep you. Got a lot of people waiting for you. If you could tell that little kid in the park that was just like Kimball Walker, dribbling a basketball, playing in the playground at night in the winter time here in New York, yep. what would be the word of advice for a young Kimball Walker? You no, know, I'll just tell him. I'll tell him. Uh, you know, whatever you do, you know, not even you know, it doesn't have to be basketball. Um, make sure you work hard at it, and you know, make sure you do well in school because, you know, if you do well in school, it can take you a long way. You know, a, a real long way. You know. Um, because you know, if I if I don't make it so far in basketball, you know, I still have my degree, you know, so I can do whatever I want. Um, so I think that's the best advice I can give a kid. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you. No one in the building was more proud than Kimba's mom. Let's hear what she had to say. We spoke to you after the Big East tournament, which was very exciting. Yes. How much better is this? Oh, this is the ultimate. This is this is the biggest stage ever. You know, he f went to the Apollo, he did the garden, and now he's go going to the NBA. So, wow, this is just unbelievable. It's just been an unbelievable year for us. Were you as nervous as he was about this? No. I have to be the rock of the family, so I always try to stay grounded, stay focused, and just make sure I'm the one that, you know, could always be there to hold his hand. As you mentioned, this is very exciting because not only is Charlotte a great opportunity to play, but also because of Michael exactly. Jordan. Exactly. I think that's the ultimate part of it. Michael Jordan, who, everybody wants to be like Mike. And now he's going to play for Mike. So, hey, it's the ultimate, ultimate. You could describe what that feeling felt like when you heard David Stern call your son's name. It's a feeling that I've been wanting to feel for the longest, especially for Kemba, because he... he um, you know, he was sitting next to me and he was just nervous. He was nervous, nervous, nervous. And you know, I just kept, you know, rubbing his shoulder and saying, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be all right. My feeling, like I said, I just try my best not to be nervous. And I'm just happy for him. And I'm happy where he's going. He's staying home on the East Coast. That's the best part of it. To be able to have him so close to home tonight, I know it's not at Madison Square Garden. It's at the Prudential Center. But what do you think this means for the people of the Bronx? Oh, this means a lot because, I mean, I don't really know of any basketball player coming out of the Bronx, especially out of Soundview. You know, we have a few that almost got their, fit, their foot in but never really made it. But this shows people of Soundview and everywhere else we can't succeed. Our final question, yesterday we asked him, we said to kind of, if he could, tell us what he thought the reception was going to be when he comes home. Oh, I think we're going to have to hide. I mean... The, uh, every time we step outside right now, all eyes are on us. So now I could imagine when we get home, and maybe he may have a parade. You never know. Congrats to the Walker family. That's your sports. We'll take our last break, but up next we will hit our mu music Monday. Stay I can't even talk anymore with Vin Keaton. Stay tuned. Music coming up next. Bye bye. All the world, one stage. NICODA, the new International Center of Diverse Artists, presents an international performing arts festival. Visit NICODA.org for info on the festival or apply to perform. Africa, Asia, America, Caribbean, support us. www.nicoda.org. NICODA, aspire, be. Hi, I'm Sean Johnson of the 2008 U.S. Gymnastics Team. 
I'm here with our friends from VeggieTales to say, Be a player, get up and play an hour a day. Besides gymnastics, how do you stay in great shape, Sean? I love to dance and rollerblade. Cool. cool. You don't have to be an Olympian to be a player. Just do the things you already love to do, like jump rope, ride a bike, or even play freeze tag. Now that's something to flip for. <laughs> well done. For fun ways to get healthy, visit www.smallstep.gov. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. My name's Brandon. In nine years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Brandon. I'll start drinking with the older kids. Whatever they do, I'll do. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. I know I'll start with alcohol. I'm just not sure how it's going to end. Low-fat cheese sandwiches on whole wheat bread. Chewy and good for you. Snacks high in calcium help build strong bones and foods rich in fiber are good for your heart, so you have the power to dominate. Can your food do that? Run, throw, think, eat better. Find out more at smallstep.gov. lose their babies to gun crimes. You'll always be your mother's baby. So before you commit a gun crime, think about who you'll leave behind. Gun crimes hit home. Hi and welcome back to Open. I'm your host, Bobby C. Before we go to our final segment, I want to chat a little bit with DJ Cool Clyde. Clyde, I wanted to, you know, throw this out there to you. I don't know if you've been on Facebook lately. I got a new <laughs> Facebook page, and it's Sports NYC. Facebook.com backslash Sports NYC. We definitely got to check that out. Got to check that That's out. That's really big. And then, since I know you're the music man here, how amazing was, was Miss Stephanie Courtney? Excellent. She was great I mean, today. Her spirit, her vibe, I was just like connecting the energies here. And just like you said, you picked up her energy on set. And I'm sure the viewers, the million of viewers that is watching this program picks up the same vibration. And that's an excellent thing. We need more of that here. And I, and I love that. I love that. She's great. And our she first knows. guest, Morpheus, gave you a tremendous love in the first segment. Uh, Anton Edwards. I mean, great guy. I mean, I've been working with him for quite some time. And this guy knows what he's talking about. And I think that, and like he said, it's not if is when so we must get prepared we need to have like canned foods we need to have certain type of flashlights that in the event that if there's some sort of um nucleus thing if you have the wrong type of flashlight it can cause an explosion so these are different things that we need to talk about and he's going to be great about that but one other thing i want to mention real quick somebody who passed away he's the guitarist for the group slave okay. 70s and 80s group um his name is mark drack hicks he passed away on uh June 14th. So I just wanted to know, let people know that from the group Slave. Sorry, sorry to Watching hear that. You is a song he did, a few other things with Steve Arrington and that band. So that was a great group, and uh, we're going to deeply miss him. My condolences go out to his family. You know, Clyde, I'm having so much fun here. I think I want to be here every Monday. Listen, man, you know, it's like great. Dr. I mean, Bob, we should... take the day off a couple of times. Listen, this is the energy is always great. I'm always playing music underneath you. We did the Friday shows, and you can, well, listen, man, you, you're here Friday, Wednesdays, and Mondays, and man, join the fan. I'm, I'm all for it, Bob. You're a great guy. We definitely love music around here. We love you spinning. And Thank you. Speaking of music, our next guest hails right here from the birthplace of hip-hop and has drawn on these musical roots to create a fresh sound. Here to perform is the talented Mr. Ben Keaton. Take it away, bud. Let's give you this microphone. Take it away. How you doing, everybody? Thank y'all for having me. Woo! Hey, hey. 
痛。哦哦，哎 ，Love is a drug, and you are my fix, and baby, all I need is a hit. And now I'm addicted. I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an old day on you. Love is a drug. We started out innocent. It was just an experiment. But you became my gateway. And now I need a stronger fix. Oh, I'm strung out on a diva, diva. Like fellas, have you seen her? Promise me if you do, let her know that I need her. Love is a drug, and you are my fix. And baby, all I need is a hit. And now I'm addicted. I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an old D on you. Love is a drug, and you are my fix. And baby, all I need is a hit. And now I'm addicted. I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an old D on you. Love is a drug. Trying to choose between your body and the program. As if I don't really need her. She's so bad, so got me acting. Have you seen her? What you silly me? This is the same recipe to make me a low D. Well, guess I'm a fiend. And your love is all I need. Oh 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 oh, baby, all I need. I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an OT. Guess I'm an OT on you. And you are my fix. And baby, all I need is a hit. And now I'm addicted. I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an old D on you. Love is a drug. Your love is a drug. Your love is a drug. And I need you. Love is a drug. Oh 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 oh. Baby, all I need is a hit. Baby, all I need. I'm addicted. I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an OT. Guess I'm an OT on you. Whoa, oh. And baby, all I need is a hit. And now I'm addicted. I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an OT on you. Love is a drug, and you are my fix. And baby, all I need is a hit. Oh, I can't let you lose. Guess I'm an OT. Guess I'm an OT on you, on you. Oh, 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 hey, hey, hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tremendous, thank tremendous you, job. You, that was you, awesome. Thank you. Thank that was really great. And right here, born and raised in yeah. the Bronx, how'd you get started? Um, I've been singing since I was six. So, like, my parents, like, my mom and my sister always used to play the music. So I would, like, go in front of the stereo and sing. Actually, the first song I sung was um, Let's Chill by Guy. Wow. So, but I was really into basketball. So okay. at the time, I was kind of high and I was really shy to sing because a lot of my friends, you know, basketball was singing at the time wasn't looked as manly. So I would hide it and play ball, and then one day, like I was singing in my room, and my friend was like, "I heard like uh, an album, but there was no music to it. Like, wh where'd you get that?" I was like, "Nah, that was me." He's like, "Get, get out of here. That wasn't you." So, so I've been singing since then, and then it's just like I've been doing this since I was 19. I'm 26 now, so to finally come around and do this full circle in the Bronx is wonderful. Well, it's not looked at until manly, until you get to be a little bit older, and then all the women yeah, talk to you, yeah, which, you know, of course, is a good thing. Once I saw that the women loved it, I, I didn't really care what um, my friends thought. You got it. So, I mean, singing some of the greats like Stevie Wonder, yeah. you know, we asked Stephanie earlier today, what's, what's your in inspiration here? My inspiration is just, I, lo I, lo I love singing, so if I had to sing in a closet, I would sing in a closet, so I just love singing. I grew up loving music, so once I got older and it was just something I knew I had to do. I did my high school talent show, and, and I, as soon as I got on there and after I was finished, I was like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So it just, I just love singing. So 
my inspiration is just music. I love music, and I want to show the gift that God gave me and my, and my interpretation of the way he gave it to me. How much has the Bronx also inspired you? How has it played a role in your development? Usually because um, it was a lot of stuff that I did locally that really let me say, oh, let me go out and do it in, the, in Manhattan and Queens, Long Island. So it was like the, the love I got in the Bronx that said, oh, let me go out and show, showcase my talents also all over the state. What's next for you? Where are you going to perform? Um, tomorrow, actually, I'm doing a, the National Association for Black Female Entrepreneurs okay. at Kitora Lounge at 6.30 to 11. Also, a fellow Bronx site rapper, Mickey Fax, will be performing there, too. So it's a fundraiser. So if you can make it, I would love to see you there. So that's what I'm doing that tomorrow. You know, with all the music here in studio today, this white boy just wants to go to the club. <laughs> that's really what it feels like, you know? <laughs> you know. Obviously, social media plays a big role today. Yeah. Yeah. Where can people find you online and through the social media? Um, you can find me at ReverbNation.com backslash Vin Keaton, um, NimbitMusic.com backslash Vin Keaton, um, Facebook.com backslash v, v. Keaton. There we go. Um, We're seeing it right there on so, the screen now. And on you, my YouTube channel, so everybody, thank you for showing me love on YouTube. My YouTube channel is YouTube.com backslash Vin Keaton. So... You gotta, and you got to keep it everything the same so people don't get lost in the sauce. So I'm just, I just love all the love I've been getting on all the channels and all the media. Oh, Twitter.com, at Vin Keaton. So I've just been getting a lot of love, and I'm appreciating it. I love coming back here. So it's great. I think it's amazing because, again, we've said it a mm -hmm. couple of times today. There's so much talent yeah. here in the Bronx, so much talent here in the borough. Mm -hmm. We asked Kimba Walker about it. We asked mm -hmm. Steph about it. I'm going to ask you about mm -hmm. it. What would be your message to the youngsters of the Bronx who might be sitting at home right now yeah. watching with their parents? Um, my message would be just perseverance because on the road to, to, um, to your dreams, there's going to be a lot of detractors and people trying to detract you off that road. So perseverance, always believe in yourself because um, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. So just always believe in yourself and like, you know, live, live through God because God, I think God puts a path for everybody. And so I just feel like you should just live, live your life and just live, live your dream. Make your dreams reality. Persevere. Because perseverance is the fuel to success. That's so. tremendous. Awesome job today. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the inspiration, the music, definitely very touching. That's yeah. all the time we have for today's show. Mm -hmm. Many thanks to all of our guests for stopping by. And, of course, to you, the viewer, for tuning in with us every Monday. Stay tuned for Open This Wednesday with Darren Jaime. And, of course, let's close out the show with a little more music. Mm -hmm. Stay Bronx strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 I've been playing in my mind over and again. How she put it down, damn, it's the same. Matter of fact, you're so good at love. It's amazing. Been like a thoroughbred, man won't spend on my bread. That girl's in addiction, make me change in my description. And she's just what I've been missing. I ain't never been the same since I did in the kitchen, kitchen, yeah. Little mama, she's so certified. Oh, you get it up and she's down the ride. Get it up, get it up, but nothing above her love. I was shook about it up, cause she's my favorite drum. Oh, oh, yeah, that girl, she's so certified. Have you wanted more each and every time? Get it up, get it up, I'm addicted to her love. I wish I could bottle it up, cause she's my favorite drug. She shakes it like a pro, and drop it, drop it so low. She takes me to the 12 round, uppercut, jab, bell rings, knock out. And she's a monster when it's lights out. Superwoman on that nouveau. It goes down when she goes down. Wait a minute, I think I hear a call in me right now. Little mama, she's so certified.